uh, this question deals with the center of mass, which um, we did introduce, and I did uh, talk about it in one of the edited videos. I, um, um, I guess, gave you the description of center of mass as the weighted average position, and there's much confusion about what weight means there. <laughs> Watch the video. Um, so here, I'm just gonna answer the question. Find the center of mass of a uh, hundred red centimeter long rod. Let me draw that. So I have a rod that I'm going to say is hundred centimeter long. And it says made of 50 centimeter of iron. Uh, oh, an iron part of the rod is on the left. All right, so I guess the left hand side is going to be iron. Actually, I don't know. Well, I think I do know how to pronounce iron. I just can't pronounce it well. Anyways, iron, <laughs> iron, and uh, on the, the right hand side is aluminum. So this is gonna be aluminum. All right, and the question is asking, express the location of the center of mass as measured from the left of the rod, assuming that the iron part of the rod is on the left. So I guess it's telling us to say that this is um, x equals zero. And our center of mass will be somewhere in this entire range and that'll be that. And now if you look at the hint, um, I guess it, it's asking if you should uh, use algebra or calculus. Um, you could use calculus, but no one's stopping you from doing that. Um, and, you know, it could be a good practice in using integration and how that works. Um, but, well, <laughs> I do intend to make you do it, but more in the context of the rotation questions. And um, for right now, for this center of mass calculation, let me use the shortcut that only requires algebra and good physical intuition. Some of you might have done it this way already, then great, good job, you have good intuition. Um, just to make sure that you know how to switch back and forth between using intuitive problem solving, which works for easy questions like this, and more rigorous mathematically, um, um, well, more rigorous uh, problem solving, which will, uh, is like a standard strategy works in even for harder questions. And we'll talk more about that later. So here, this is what I would intuitively do. Intuitively, I would imagine breaking up this rod into two pieces. I have this piece on the left-hand side to think about, and I have this piece on the right-hand side to think about. So looking at the left-hand side, I realize, oh, that's just a uniform rod. For uniform rods, I know where the center of mass should be. The center of mass should be here, right in the center. So this is the, uh, let's call it X, center of mass of iron, piece of the rod. All right, that's one. And looking at the aluminum piece also, uh, my intuition tells me that if I'm just looking at this piece, that the center of mass of that piece is also at the center of the aluminum um, side. So this is gonna be uh, X center of mass of aluminum. And based on the geometric consideration, I know what these values are. This is 25 centimeters. And this is also, uh, well not also, this is 75 centimeters. This is in the middle of the range between 50 centimeters and 100 centimeters. All right, then um, I guess all I need to do is just to calculate the center of mass between these two kind of hypothetical math masses, this piece here and this piece here. And, um, and I can kind of uh, justify that. Um, so when you look at the center of mass formula, really what it says is it's a weighted average. It's a sum of the weights, which are masses of 
move some i to the piece at the position x i divided by the, the sum of all the weights, that is sum of all the masses. That's the kind of basic principle behind uh, calculating the center of mass. And by separating it out into these two pieces, this is basically what I've done. I have decided to redistribute these two, um, redistribute these two, uh, or I guess uh, not redistribute, regroup these uh, summations. So let me imagine just pulling out this denominator, which is just a constant, so I can just have it here, one over sum of uh, all the masses, and I'm just gonna deal with that uh, numerator here. Um, so I can just rearrange the sum, regroup them. And what I've decided to do is let's add up all the pieces that are in the iron part as one. So that's uh, masses um, xi. So that's one group plus I'm saying let's add up all the pieces in that's uh, in the aluminum and that will be all the masses there xi. Um, yeah, can I do it that way? Maybe. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be fine. So, um, yeah, now if you're just looking at the center of mass, um, you run into a bit of a problem. Sorry, I was having this thought in my head. The problem you run into is that uh, this expression here is not the, just the center of mass. So what you have to make sure is you have to take the center of mass of the iron because um, the expression for this is going to look something like this. Some of all the uh, masses uh, in iron divided by sum of all the masses, so masses times position in iron divided by sum of just the masses. So to get this, what you have to do is you have to take the center of mass of iron and then multiply it by sum of all the uh, masses in iron. So that these things cancel out. And what you are putting in here is the correct thing. So what you need to do is, all right, let's just get the mass of the iron part of the rod. Multiply that with the center of mass of iron. That's this term here. So we'll do that. And when you work it out really what it ends up being is it ends up looking a lot like, and it is, um, ends up being center of mass between two point masses. That is, uh, on the numerator, you are going to have mass of the iron, the total mass of the iron part, and the center of mass of the iron part plus mass of the aluminum part times center of mass of the aluminum part of the um, rod. So divide that by the total mass, which is the mass of the iron part plus mass of the aluminum part. So when you look at this uh, question, it might feel like um, there are some missing information. As in, if it gives you density, but it doesn't really give you all the information you would need to calculate the actual masses. This is where uh, the other hints come in. Um, so to express the masses, uh, what the mass should be is the density times the volume of the thing. And for something that's rather shaped, the volume should be cross sectional area times the length. So it's going to be density times the cross sectional area times the, the length of the rod. 
So what you have to imagine here is imagine plugging in this expression into each of these expressions for mass. And I hope you see that some factors are common and will cancel out. Um, the area is, um, assuming the regular shape of rod, cross-sectional area is a common and will cancel out. And even though the length won't cancel out in general, in this particular case, they cancel out because we are dealing with the same 50 centimeter for the iron and the aluminum part. So after considering those cancellations, this uh, equation simply becomes, well, density of the iron times the center of mass of iron plus the density of aluminum times the center of mass of aluminum divided by some of the densities. Density of the iron plus the density of the aluminum. Yeah, I think that's everything. So yeah, now you have all the numbers. You have the two densities and you have the two centers of mass and you plug in the numbers, you should get a number that's uh, somewhere between 25 and 50 centimeters, and that's it. <laughs>